Gentlemen, welcome back to the desk and in this part of the Naze 32 versus the Pixhawk, we are going to be looking at Patrick Emelson's base flight fixed wing or base flight aeroplane. Now, if you missed the previous episode, up in your screen right now is what happens when I use the Naze 32 and iNav. So that's written off that option. The next option which we've got, like I mentioned, is Patricky's uh, base flight aeroplane and the results are very, very promising. So before we get across to the flight line and see what really happened on the flight line, the flutter which you see on the elevons, that's okay. It's only a gains issue. Now, I'll let you into on a, a future part of this series. Uh, I've been up and I've been and flown it since and I've reduced the gains to half. Far more stable. So I was a little bit more relaxed with this uh, software and NASA 32 setup. Uh, so that when it didn't really turn very well, I knew the reason why it wasn't turning very well. So with that said, let's get ourselves across to the flight line. It is an absolute perfect day for flying. And with that said, let's go, go, go. I'm so annoyed with iNav, that almost killed that tech sumo. And as you saw, it came out on camera, just nosedived towards the ground. It was flying fine, and I hit return to home in it. But anyway, let's press on. Let's face it, it's better that I stuff my model, and you keep your models all nice and pretty. So that let me go through the rough stuff, and the damn frustration. But down here, we have been and got... We've got Patrick E's base flight, uh, base flight aeroplane. I've just been through the settings. This is the first time I've flown this. Uh, I did need to reverse the roll and the pitch on one of the servos. Oh, reverse the roll on both servos and the pitch on one of them. Uh, besides that, it picked up like almost all of the satellites on the GPS. So we know the GPS is working fine. That's pretty lively over there, isn't it? Right, so if she goes nose down, the elevons go up. I push it down, they go down. I go right, it goes right. That's it, but it's a bit lively. Look how much that one there's moving. Let's just... Screw it. Let's try and fly it. Right, there's a lot of flutter. I can see that on the elevons. So obviously the gains are up a bit high. I've put her into rate mode. Yeah, she's fluttering. That's obviously one of the gains out. Right. After my mistake last time, I'm going to take her up. Oh, actually, let me just try manual mode of mode. Manual mode. Quite responsive. Right. Mode active. Return to launch. Loiter mode off. I don't know where she was going then. Loiter mode. Can't see, bugger all, so bright up here. Right, this is loiter mode. I am just letting her do a thing. I've got my finger on the button. Coming back. It's bloody hard to see in that sunshine. Oh, poof. Don't know if you can see that. So she is coming back now. This is loiter mode still. I am not moving. Right, there's a lot of gain issues going on. I can cope with that. That's, like I said, it's just one of the settings. It seems to be maintaining the height. I really wish it wouldn't go in the sun. But actually, this one, I've got the faith that it's going to come back. Yeah, see, I've still not touched her. That is coming home. Right, this is well workable. 
Right, so I'm going to let her cross out the sun. I can still hear war warbling out there. Right. I'm in manual mode, I think. No, I'm in rate mode. And there's no wind today. Well, there's, there is wind, but it's very, very gentle. So. Well, hey, it kind of works. The loiter mode was all right. GPS home, not so good. But that is workable. Engine off. Engine off. Right. I need to get on the old Googler over there. There's got to be a setting sheet, which I don't know if you saw the elevons. They were fluttering side to side to side. That tells me the gains are up a bit high. We need to, to tone things down a bit. But it came home and it loitered. It did not commit side. And apologies for the language uh, after this little intermission of music. Da -da 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 -da. I know that doesn't work. Yeah, but too much, like I said right at the beginning, just too much uh, movement. It's a bit too twitchy. But that's alright. It tried to come home-ish. Definitely did loiter. I couldn't put FPV on it at the moment, so let's get the old Googler out and see what's that, what that says. So on the flying site, I got the laptop out and I did what I thought was right, what I would do with a quadcopter, which was just turn the gains down a touch. And what I've worked out since coming home and now producing this video for you is that I should have basically divided the gains by two. So whatever the, the P gain, etc., etc., whatever the values were, I should have halved them. And in a later flight, which you'll find out in later in the series, is that that did seem to do the trick. So it wasn't so sketchy on there. And if you can see the Texumo there, they're still fluttering wildly. But hey ho, you can't keep a good man down. Uh, we're going to chuck it in the air anyway and see what it does, even with a slight decrease in settings. Right, flight number two with Patrick E's base flight aeroplane. I just turned down that gain rate ratio thing to see if that makes a bit of a difference. So I've got her in rate mode at the moment. It's armor. Still a bit twitchy. Oh, horizon mode's wet. Very twitchy. Yeah, still fluttering like a butterfly. So maybe that wasn't the right setting. So let's get her up high again. I want to give uh, GPS home another whirl. So I'm going to hit GPS. Return to launch. This is return to launch. Off. Oh, save that then. Just for the record, that is a different naze board which I'm using in there. So let's bring her into land. Right, return to launch, I don't know where it was going, but it was miles off, maybe it's that flutter, unlike the iNav, which tried killing it, maybe it's just the uh, gains out on this one a bit, I'm going to persist with this, right, flight number, forget that right, three, uh, with Patrick E's base flight, still annoyed about iNav, trying to suicide my tech sumo, not happy camper about that, but I've just been in tweaked some of the PIDs. I've just moved them all down by a, a whole point. And, uh, does help if I put it in a rate mode. Still plenty of movement there. I'll tell you what. It's arm. It did beep that would tell us we had a GPS fix. I'm just going to make sure that battery's all right in there after I Navtron has killed the attack sumo. Let's uh, give it a whirl this time and see what she does. So the wind's coming towards me. Engine off. Engines on. 
Right, that doesn't want to go this time. Let's try that now. Still wobbling. I've obviously not turned them down enough. Yeah, look, you see her flapping. Let me see if I can bring her around for a... a pass. Yeah, see the flapping? Right, let's get her up high, and we're going to go for another GPS return to launch. So, I want to just rule out that I'm not too close to the flying site, if that makes any sense. So, let's get her up over there. Right. Return to home now. Return to launch. Return to launch. Where's she going? She's coming back. She's coming back. Come on, girl. You can do it. Yeah, left a bit. Come on. And definitely not into that sunshine, please. I should have already put my sunnies on. Yeah, she's coming round. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Oh, I'm a happy camper. Right. Off. So it's off now. We've still got the fluttery issue. So I'm going to get to loiter there. Loiter mode. Come on, this way, girl. It's not a very tight loiter. You've got that depth. Oh, I don't know. That's come round quite sharply. Remember, I owned it over there. <coughs> My hands are off the controls. So that's where I armed her. So is she going to... She's thinking about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. She's thinking about it. It's, oh, just mash buttons aimlessly. Yeah, this loiter thing needs to be a little bit tighter. Sorry, I've got my hand... I've had my hands in front of the camera. Look, I know the gains are up a bit high, but I'm going to take a seat. She's gone the other way this time. Again, I'm not even checking on it. I should probably keep an eye on it. Is that there somewhere? Not like I now, have you tried stoving it in the ground? This is brilliant. I reckon I could go and stick the FPV camera on this right now. Could do with a bit more roll input. Mr. Patrick E, you have done a very, very good job, sir. Right, my hands are still off, by the way. Right, I'm going to take it out of uh, loiter mode now. Off. I don't know why it does that little brrrr at the end. Let's bring her down now. Yeah, look at that flutter. Let's bring her around. Well done, Mr. Patrick E. Do you know what? I think you got a winner. I am most impressed. That held the loiter. Yeah, it was a bit big. And again, we got a bit of flappy going on with it. And apologies, the sun's probably a bit bright. It might be a bit nicer if I stick you around that way. Happy boy. Happy boy. Hmm. Let's get her back. Let's see if we can muck around with those rates a bit more. So well done, Patrick E. Two thumbs up. You did really well, fella. And yes, I am very forgiving in the amount of flutter which we had on the Elevons. 
Now, you saw me with the laptop out there and I reduced them by, I think it was 0.5 or just one uh, value uh, down at a time. And given enough time, uh, and again, I've tried to keep this video as short as possible, which is that I finally got to around the right settings on the flight line and it wasn't until I went home and I had to change them again uh, to what the suggestions were, which were half uh, the default values and it does fly pretty damn well. Now, I wasn't adventurous enough to stick an FBV camera on there. I, I came to the conclusion that it did need more work around the gains. But let's just quickly recap what happened. We had the gains up too high, so the elevons were overcompensating. That's okay. We can live with that because it's just setting orientated. We did have trouble arming in the beginning. It just needed to be on a super flat level. That's, that, that's fair enough. We'll let that one off and get a slide as well. GPS return to home worked really well and with all that flutter it did a really good job uh, again you may have not been able to see it on the video but it really was pushing those elevons up and around a lot loiter mode also worked too and obviously it's not perfect and I need to change the settings to reduce that loiter circle because it was kind of big uh, as we saw on the video but all of that aside, I think we've got ourselves a bit of a winner here. Now, I'm going to go on and tweet the settings for base flight aeroplane again uh, and get some more flight time out there. Now, before you go and ask or even worry yourself about what settings do you need for base flight and your, and your NACE 32, don't panic. The purpose of this series is to find a board like this the NASI 32 and the software combination by Patrick E, uh, which is Base Flight Aeroplane. And then once we find out the combination or combinations that work, then I'll create you a separate video and I'll take you through all the steps. So, for example, with the NASI 32, I'll show you where to go and get the latest version of Base Flight Aeroplane, how you can flash it to your NASI 32 board, the settings which you would want not only in your NASI or NAS A32 board, but also your transmitter settings as well uh, and get you on the right lines. So I am a super happy camper. Um, I did have to cut some swear words in there about the INAV. Apologies if you saw some dodgy editing. But that aside, we've got ourselves a winner. Well done, Patrick Emerson. You've done a great job there. Uh, I can't wait to get the Tech Sumo back up with that combination. So with that said, if you've ever used Patrick E's uh, base flight aeroplane, any tips or suggestions, please let us know underneath this video. Next up, we are going to be looking at the Pips Hawk. Uh, and I can give you a little bit of a, like a nod on that one as well. That does pretty good out of the box, to say the least. But we're not stopping there. We had the Pix Racer suggested, which is a miniature version of the Pix uh, Pixhawk, uh, it's uh, like a quarter of the size and also I've got a CC3D board uh, on order right now and we will also give that one a whirl too. So with that said for myself Matt, thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video and joining in with this series. If you'd like to be notified of the next part of this mini series of using the NAS A32 and Pixhawk and other derivatives as flight stabilization with and also cool features like GPS return to home or return to launch and loiter modes. Don't forget to press the subscribe button over on YouTube and you'll be notified the second the next part in this series is released. So with that said, from myself Matt, cheerios! Happy camper, Patrick, he's a genius.